Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north, and today we are looking at the plant Thunbergia alata, otherwise known as Black Eyed Susan Vine, not to be confused with a Rebecca. I'll discuss why it's called Black Eyed Susan in a little while, but today we're going to have a look at what's going wrong with it and what I can do to put things right. So if you've got a Thunbergia alata, you might want to tune in. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so now what we're looking at here is obviously not the Thunbergia alata. This is the Mandevilla vine otherwise known as Diplodenia sanderi. But if we move along, and people who have tuned into some of my videos in the past will have seen this a number of times on the What's Blooming In video. So this vine here with the, I don't know what colour you'd call that, kind of a, a deep red maybe. I don't know, I'm not very good with colours at describing colours. A burnt orange? No, it's not orange, is it? more red than orange like a like a brownie red it is it, its common name or what was written on the label anyway was Thunbergia brownie and gosh, there's a lot of webs in this corner and it has been looking really good for a number of months but if you'll just move you along and we'll, we'll have to get some of these other nicer looking plants out of the way you can see that the leaves aren't looking that healthy anymore there's still a couple of blooms hanging on there it goes up to I'm just trying to follow it it goes up to just over there so it's probably about two three feet long but the leaves are looking dreadful and they're dying off and there is something going on with it which has changed it and it's quite recent that this has happened because up to a couple of weeks ago definitely my last what's blooming in so that would have been what's blooming in may we're in early june now it's the 7th 8th of june i can't remember i lose track because we're still in mostly lockdown and the the blooms of the uh, the blooms are beginning to fade, as in the, I'm not getting as many blooms as I was before, and it's not twining the same. It's not it's not putting out new growths the same. So what's happening? Well, I'll I'll tell you in a minute. But first of all, let's just look at the blooms. Now these are like a tubular bloom. This one on the in the left hand is that's one that's just about to come out, and the one in the right obviously is out. Um, the way the reason I'm pointing that just about to come out is because if I just move you along again, they look very similar to the ones that are spent. And the only way of telling is by looking inside, and you can see inside the where the seed head would form if I left it long enough. If I can get in it with one hand. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Can you see inside there? So that's how you know that that one's spent, finished with. You can leave those if you want. I tend to cut them off. You don't have to deadhead it, but I always think it, it, it encourages it to produce, encourage it, encourages it to produce more blooms. But the blooms are looking brilliant, and no wonder looking at these leaves. They're supposed to be deep green. They're not supposed to be all washed out like that. So. Let's just talk about I'll talk about labelling first of all. So this is Black Eyed Susan, and you can see it says Thungbergia brownie. I'm pointing out the G in the middle. It shouldn't be there. And that's not my mistake. That's the mistake of the garden centre that I bought it from. It's Thunbergia. There is no G in the middle. So why Black Eyed Susan? Well, anybody who knows Rudbeckia, I'll try and put a, a picture up on screen. Rudbeckia is a, a herbaceous perennial that we have here in the UK and probably in other places and again it was one of these that was thought to be similar to Rudbeckia so it coined the term black eyed Susan as we get with Rudbeckia but it's nothing to do with Rudbeckia it's just kept that name as a, as a common synonym so apart from having a dark centre and these come in, these come in, in several different colours 
you can get these plants in, let me think, reds, oranges, yellows and white. I've written in my notes here. And they are actually a perennial plant from the east of Africa where they, they are considered invasive in a lot of countries in Australia, Colombia, there was quite a few countries where they were considered invasive but the I can say their loss is our gain it's because for us over here in the very temperate UK this becomes a nice vigorous climber. I'm just trying to look closely now to see if there's any pests on it Last year I did get, I think these are just spiders webs actually in my fingers, I did get the exact same problem last year. And what's happening here with this plant is that the aspect that I've got it in, I've got it in full sun, and they do like full sun, but it's on the side of the greenhouse that doesn't have shading on it. Now I have got shading on it now, I'll just step back and show you. You, you can just see from outside how there is just a section there where it's a little bit darker and that's the shading that I've put up outside I think it's 80% cloth, shade cloth but my problem was, I was too late and this is actually bleaching from the sun and you can probably just see it on here too on the Manda Villa and they like sun as well but not that much sun and this is one of the problems with growing in a greenhouse so you've got all these extremes coming at you constantly as the seasons change you know it's either too cold it's too dull it's too dark it's it can't be too wet that's fine i don't mind that but obviously that leads to really low light levels obviously also we've got in the winter the shorter days so low light levels for a, a less len a length of time which these plants aren't used to because all the plants I've got in here are tropical plants so it, it becomes a real problem to try and accommodate all these different varieties of plants that I've got in here if I only had orchids then that would be easier because then I could try and arrange my conditions just for orchids but I haven't I've got all sorts of tropical plants and they're not all the same so this one I mean I know there are differences within orchids too so this one is a climbing vine and it's actually perennial I'm just listening to a fly buzzing above my head it's just hopefully going to settle down for a little while I don't know if you can hear it uh, so yeah, it's a climbing vine, it's perennial. I have seen it described as a, a herbaceous perennial, but it's not. I think these titles that they give to these plants very often depends on where, where the author is. So for, for this one, this plant, it's very often classed and labelled in garden centres as an annual climber. But of course, in the UK, in a temperate climate, it's, it's annual or it can be treated as an annual it's actually a tropical plant it just doesn't like frost so if you grow it in the UK outside it'll be great through the summer if you have a nice warm summer but come winter come the first frosts it's going to kill it so if you dig yours up and bring it inside bring it under glass and protect it from frost it will be fine it will come back again next year so yeah, we were talking about what's actually happened to mine. Now last year the exact same thing happened. I thought I got the shading up in time this year, but I think my shade cloth and that, I know just looking through that little gap there, I can see that's 50% shade cloth. That's not 80% shade cloth and it's not enough. So at this time of year, when the sun comes round behind the trees outside, it's on this left-hand side of the greenhouse for a number of hours and it's bleached all the leaves out and it's just too hot for it even though it likes hot direct sun not behind glass there are very few plants that can cope with that intensity of heat the other problem that it had which these plants are susceptible to <clears throat> they're susceptible to white fly this didn't have white fly and spider mite which is a little bit more tricky to to spot but i don't think we've actually got spider mite on it this time I'm just trying to have a, a closer look, but I can't see anything. I'm pretty sure it's just bleached. 
So, what do we do with it? Well, the first thing is I'm going to have to untwine it and take it down from its perch. Now, I'm not going to do that on camera, but while I just think about doing that, I'll talk about a couple of other things as well first. The watering of these plants is they, they get dry this time of year very, very easily. Now, this one is quite wet, and I think that's mainly because it's not growing. It's in, it's in kind of shut-down mode because it's not happy. But I'm confident I can get it happy again, just like I did last year, and I'm going to give it a repot as well. They don't generally like disturbance to the roots, so what I'm going to do is try not to disturb the roots, just to disturb the, if there is any, the loose soil that I can find around it and give it a boost by putting it in uh, a John Innes potting compost. John Innes number two, it likes loamy compost. I think a compost with organic matter, rotted organic matter, and you get that with a John, a John Innes number two, which will also give it a little bit of feed as well. I'm gonna mix that with some perlite just to open it up a bit, retain some moisture. They don't like sitting in water. I've put this on here just because the water was draining through rather too quickly. So I, I leave it for a little while to suck up what drains through and then I remove that. I've not done that for a while, I keep forgetting. But I should remove that so that it doesn't sit in water. That might be another issue as well, I'll have to have a look at that. But there's a lot of plants in here and it's very difficult to keep on top of everything. So inevitably, my YouTube friends see all the failures. So at the moment, I'm considering this one a semi-failure but I'm sure it will become a success again as soon as I've managed to give it a repot and prune it right back, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and leave a few leaves on it. I don't want to totally destroy the thing, but I'm gonna prune all these twining stems right back, leave a few leaves on at the bottom, put it in a, a slightly more sheltered place, still bright, but out of the direct sunlight. And hopefully, just like it did last year, it will sprout back again and be ready to give me another show over the rest of the summer. So I'll show you the finished product in a little while. Okay, so actually some of these pieces are longer than I thought. Some of them are about four feet long and it's not easy to untwine uh, two, two twining plants because they're both self-climbing self and self-twining. I think the Thumbergia is probably more of a twiner than the Mandevilla but uh, you can see that it's not totally unhappy. I mean, look at its roots there. And like I say, it dislikes root disturbance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a larger pot. It looks like it's quite happy there in that pot. It just needs to be in a better aspect. And I may go and change that 50% shade cloth and change it to an 85% shade cloth because I do have some. So I'm going to cut this right back. Like I say, I'm going to try and leave some leaves on the now what this, these kind of mottle effect is, I've no idea. I've not managed to figure that one out, whether that's just part of the sun damage. It's possible you've got like these really white bleached out leaves. Um, and you've also got the, the darker ones down here. But whatever's going on, it's not happy. And I do think it's the sun. It happened last year. And when I pruned it right back, it, uh, it definitely sprouted back up again in a much healthier looking way. I'm going to have to have a real close look to see if I can spot any spider mites as well to see if that could be the problem. So yeah, we were talking about one or two ways of looking after these things. So I think we've covered most things already. Humidity, it does like some humidity. It's not absolutely necessary and you're going to get that in the UK anyway. We've said the media, we've said the colours. Um, it is a repeat bloom. You don't have to deadhead it, but it does help usually with most of these plants. Uh, I've talked about watering. Fertilise during the growing season. We've said the pests and we've said that it's invasive. So I think we've covered all those. So what I'll do, I will repot this, have a look at the root, and I might jump back on in between if there's anything noteworthy to, to film. But otherwise, I'll see you after the repot. Right, so what I've done, I've cut all these leaves back, all these twining stems back. And even though I'm not that thrilled with the look of these leaves, I didn't want to completely get rid of them. I wanted to give it some way of 
uh, rejuvenating itself and if you look in the leaf nodes there are new growths on there so what will probably happen if those new growths start to come then I will take these old leaves off and it's the same in each of the leaf nodes there are some new growths some of them I did remove the leaves I thought well, we'll give it a try and see if those new leaf nodes do begin to break and show me some new growth. I've also took the moss off which obviously wasn't helping and I've noticed that this plant is sitting rather high the way it's been potted at the garden centre. I don't know if you can see that it's sitting quite high in its pot. So I'm going to unpot it now and see what's going on underneath and then pot it up in a bigger pot with some new compost. Okay, so you can see there's nothing wrong with that root system and I'm not going to disturb that. That's showing that it's a really good healthy plant despite the way that it looks. So I would definitely say this is the sun that's damaged it. Just too close to the glass and too hot, too much direct sun. There, there doesn't seem to be any spider mite on there. I might give it a little spray as well just to make sure but well, I'm not going to use a systemic I really need to get some of that neem oil stuff I'll just keep keep putting off getting it I, I'm not really that happy with the way that the systemics are having a, a negative effect on all my plants they seem to be creating all sorts of peculiar mutations as you might have seen from one of my previous videos if you've not go and have a look at that one quite an interesting one and it was to me anyway, I hope it was to other people. Okay, so I need to find a pot for that, a little bit bigger. And see these things here were, that's the remnants of my last feeding stick that I put in there. So I'll also put a new, well actually I might not do a feeding stick, I might do some of the, the, uh, the little, what do you call them, pellets in there as well instead. Right, okay, let's get a pot. Right, okay, so I've got my John Innis number two here. So I've got two parts John Innis number two mixed with just one part of perlite just to open it up. They do like a well-drained mix. As far as watering goes, they really like a lot of water in the summertime and just make sure that they drain through. I think really sticking a a tray underneath probably was a mistake that feels quite moist I don't think that's been the issue with it but I think it probably needs to dry out a bit more um, I'm looking forward to some new growth coming on here and then we can get rid of these horrible old leaves so I think it's going to like that I've not disturbed the roots they're all still in the root ball I'm going to leave that like that I've got let's get rid of this little bit of moss here I'm going to try and keep it free of moss as well so I've got a bigger pot here now these, this, these ones have massive holes in the bottom so the obligatory crocs over the holes to stop everything falling through and it's simply a case of potting it up Okay, all done. So I'll stick a new label on that. And this is what I'm going to feed it with this Miracle Grow All Purpose plant food. And I'm just going to put a few of the grains, granules, pellets, whatever you want to call them, on top there. Should really measure that out, but let's take a risk. <laughs> so it just needs a water and then it can go back up or it can go in a new place. I'll have to have a think about that. So yeah, that's Thunbergia alata, or black-eyed Susan vine. You'll find other names for it. Um, I'm quite sure you'll be able to spot the kind of flowers that they are. They're pretty, it's pretty distinct. 
and uh, I hope I've managed to give you some insight anyway into how I look after it or how to look after one and I'm hoping that the next time you see it is looking back to its best again and not being damaged by the sun. So if you enjoyed this give it a thumbs up, if you didn't give it a thumbs down, I don't mind which and for now I'll see you on the next one. Bye!